guys, it's Katie here with Life in the Mundane, and today I want to come talk to you about what we are doing this summer to keep learning alive, especially in the area of history. Um, as you guys know, uh, if you've watched my other videos, we are currently schooling through the summer, which is not something we typically do. Um, I like to take the break. I like to have lots of fun with my kids and to just kind of get away from the formal book learning. Obviously, we're learning all throughout. Um, but kind of get away from the formal book learning and but this year because of our move we were not able to do that and we needed to continue to go through the summer. So I've been looking for ways on how to infuse more of that fun and that summer fun into our schooling. So yes, we've got to do the schoolwork, we've got to do the math and the reading, but how can we make it a little, little more special, mix it up just a little bit? And I'm really excited to talk to you guys about what we're doing, especially in the area of history, for infusing some of that hands-on fun for our family. So let's get started. So like I said, we are homeschooling through the summer, and while we did finish our um, our history curriculum uh, about a week ago, um, which is exciting because we're you know knocking off a subject or so at a time, the kids were actually really disappointed because history is one of their favorite subjects that we do, and um, and so they were kind of like, oh, that just leaves us with some of the other ones, and and they were really hoping to have that more fun, engaging. They love the stories. They love um, just learning about these things. And so I was sort of sitting here trying to figure out what to do. And at that time, I was contacted, had the opportunity to um, to try out Sunlight has actually come out with a hands-on history box. It comes with all of these super fun hands-on activities. Now, the problem is, is we're not doing Sunlight. We didn't do Sunlight history this year, and we're not planning on doing it next year. Uh, I think it's a fantastic program, but it's just not what we've chosen for this year. And so I didn't think that it would be a good fit for us. But as I did some more research, I found out that it can be used with any history curriculum. And actually, with the curriculum we were using, the projects that were in it were covering pretty much um, at least you know here or there covering different parts of what we had just learned. So it actually was the perfect follow-up. If I had known about it during the school year, I would have done it in the school year alongside our history. Um, but because we didn't find out about it, it actually makes the perfect segue to review to still have a fun history element to our summer schooling before we start next year's school. So I was really excited about this and I wanted to bring it to you guys and show you and talk to you a little bit about it. So basically, it's a hands-on history kit. If you guys have seen that, like the subscription boxes and how you can get um, a subscription box for so much a month and they send your kids these hands-on activities and um, give you some fun learning, uh, fun facts to go with it. This is a similar concept, only the thing I like about that is in our homeschool budget, we can't afford to do a, um, we can't afford to do a monthly subscription that's just kind of ongoing and never ending. The other thing is, is it makes it really hard for me to lesson plan. Like I want to know what I'm getting before I get it. And um, I know the surprise element is fun, but when I was investing that money into it, I wanted to know that it would fit with what we were actually learning. And so I really enjoyed this because you buy it once and you're good. It's nine projects and um, very, very affordable when you think about that versus nine subscription boxes. And so I love the supplement to the curriculum. And I wanna show you guys a little bit of what's inside the box. First off, the box itself, is beautiful like when it came in the mail my kids were so excited they were already excited to be getting hands-on history projects but on top of that they loved the look of the box and how fun it is and i love the fact that i can continue to store all of the projects in there until we get to them so they don't get lost um, or missing pieces so i love that element of it and then the other thing i loved is that it came with proper literature i guess um, good guides to help you so they have a hands-on history book for teachers, and it's got, each project has its own section. It has a little blurb on some of the historical facts about what you're building. So when you're talking about the Trojan horse, they're gonna talk a little bit about that. When you're talking about some of these different ones, you're gonna have some history behind it. Um, so that even if you haven't, maybe you haven't done world history, this is a world history kit. And so maybe you didn't do world history, you're not doing it right now, but you want something fun over the summer to give you kind of overview of history. You can still use it. I would recommend it more for um, a supplement to what you're already doing for history versus um, a standalone per se, but it would still be really fun to do. If you wanted to do a standalone for this for the summer, order it, 
do the projects, watch a few YouTube videos on it, check out a few books from the library on the different subjects, and you can really make a really fun unit study with this. So anyway, so I love the fact that it has that. It gives all the instructions. When you look at the specific project, they have a page, like I said, of the history, step-by-step -step pictures telling you exactly what to do next and what it should look like, which for a Pinterest challenged mom, that is always a helpful thing for me. It also rates it according to difficulty and how much parent involvement it should take. And this is something that is meant to be done alongside with your parent for the most part. I mean, older kids wouldn't necessarily need to, but I like the fact that it kind of gives you some ratings as far as difficulties. So I can go, oh, I only have a little bit of time. Let's pick a little bit easier one. It also comes with this sheet. And so if you are using sunlight, you can just throw this into your binder and it tells you exactly which weeks um, these projects correspond with with the world history um, curriculum. So you've got week one um, for sunlight. When you do that, you can do the miniature yurt um, project for you. And uh, week 14, you're going to do the Trojan horse. And it kind of gives you how you can sort of insert that into the program. So I like the fact that if you are using it, it makes it easy to insert. And if you're not using it, it's just as easy to use. And that is a huge benefit to me. So what do the projects look like? Um, they have a wide variation of projects and they give you in the front of that guide, they give you a supply list for everything. And they give you the supply list for everything you're gonna need for that project that they've already included, as well as a few things you might need on your own. And I looked through every project, we haven't finished all of them, but I've looked through every project and the things that you have to provide on your own is like an oven and you know, a baking sheet and maybe tin foil, maybe, and a pen. And that was usually the majority of the kinds of materials you needed. So very, very easy, something most people have. Um, you're not gonna have to go out and buy other supplies. What I, the reason why I like the fact that they listed out the supplies they gave you is you can do a little checklist, especially if your toddler were to get into your packaging, not that that would ever happen, but you can do a little checklist to make sure you have everything you need to get started. But the other benefit is, is I got one kit and I have four kids that are old enough to do this. And of course the toddler wants to be involved as well. And so I have the opportunity, a lot of the projects we're just working on as a group um, and we're just teaming up together. It's good teamwork. We break it up into steps, into teams, but for those projects that are more individualized and you know you might want something for each child, I have the list of supplies right there. So if it's something affordable, I can just gather those supplies myself and we can do that for all the kids. Um, so that's an option that it gives you as well. Or if you wanted to um, go back and do this project again, maybe you have older kids now and you wanna do it with them and next year you wanna do it with younger kids, you could continue to use it. So I like that aspect to it. Then each project comes in a Ziploc bag and it comes with a picture of, and then the title of what it is. This is the Trojan horse bag. And then it's got all the supplies in there and then your instructions are in that booklet. Um, again, you have it for, um, they're making a dragon, fire breathing dragon puppet, which my kids are really excited about. They can't wait to get into those two projects specifically. And I was impressed with the quality there's a wide vari variation of materials and of, of different kinds of projects, but I like the fact that there were some that, yes, you would create. They have a chariot that you can create and a working chariot, and I think that's cool, and the kids are really excited about doing that, but in reality, that's not gonna stick around our house for very long, um, but I like the fact they get the experience of building it. They get to see some of the structural parts of it. They get to be involved with it, but then they also had some things that were a lot um, better structure so they have this game that the Egyptian, Egyptians played, um, and it was actually found in King Tut's tomb is one of the fun facts that uh, you find out in within the packet. But what I like about it is they've got this, it's a, it's a sticker sheet that you're gonna apply and they give you a nice, good size um, board. And you're gonna put this on here and then your kids are actually gonna be making the game pieces with clay and baking them in the oven. And so I love the fact that that's something that we can keep long-term. That's not just, you know, a project that's gonna stay on the shelf and be displayed for a while and then pitched at the end of the year. This is something we can keep long-term and it will always remind them of that history lesson. So I like the fact that there was a wide variation of, um, of projects in there for each kind of type and style and fitting something for me for bang for buck as well as excitement and um, new things. They have different kits. They have this one for world history and then 
they have another they have um, another kit and I will drop links below on where you can find out what's in the kits and where you can see um, the different options for kits sunlight is actually doing a giveaway right now we'll drop links below as to where you can find out how to enter because you guys are gonna want to win one of these trust me it is super fun and exciting my kids love it and they're excited to have something the only negative thing I have to say about it so far is the fact that I kind of wish they have at the beginning of every lesson they have like I said the ratings for how difficult on like a scale of one to three how difficult um, the project is and then how much parental involvement is involved but what I wish they had that they don't is that they had like an estimated time on project because we had uh, the other day we were trying out one of the fun projects we we're making our own sip our own seal so the kids were getting to mold clay and then carve something in the clay and being able to roll it out and use it like a stamp pad um, and make impressions to show how they did it um, in history but <laughs> while it was a while it was the level one um, we actually had somewhere we had to be shortly after and I didn't realize that part of the process was after you finished carving the clay and everything like that that you had to bake it for like 15 to 30 minutes depending on the size of how big you had made yours. And of course we had made ours larger. And so I didn't have time to do it. Now the good news was I just stuck it in a book bag. We were good. I popped it in the oven when we got back. Everything turned out great and it worked out perfect. But I wish there was some kind of estimate. And honestly, all it takes is mom just opening up the book and looking through the project and actually reading through all of the instructions before she starts. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't have been that difficult, but if you're like me, one of the advantages of having something like this that's open and go and ready is that you don't have to do that. So it would be nice if they just added at the top, you know, this is about a 15 to 30 minute project or whatever. Um, but other than that, I've really enjoyed the, the process. I love the fact that I can use it with my curriculum for history and my kids are thrilled to be doing hands-on history and continue that learning and that fun element to our summer schooling until we can get to next year and starting our new books. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If you enjoy videos on homeschooling, home management, parenting, and other topics like that, I would love if you would take a second to subscribe to my channel. Um, during the month of July, we are actually going to be focusing pretty much solely on homeschooling just because the new year is coming up and there's so much prep and so many fun videos that I want to do for you guys. My homeschool room tour, my homeschool curriculum picks, um, want to get into um, some other fun homeschooling topics and a few other reviews of curriculum and I want to give all that to you guys before you start your new school year so that you are um, ready and prepared and you have that information before starting a new school year so because of that we're going to kind of do that in July but then in August we'll go right back to doing sort of an even split between parenting and home management and homeschooling so if those sound interesting to you I would love if you take a second to subscribe click the little bell icon to um, be notified when new videos come out and comment and share let me know have you tried something like this? Are you using sunlight? What are you using for history this year? And I can't wait to talk to you guys later. Bye.